I make too many jokes about Tom, and I shouldn't do that. Because he is a wonderful human being. He actually went to UCLA Medical Center and offered to donate his organs, you know, for transplants. He did. And the doctors told him he should have come years ago at the moment of his death. So, so I'm not going to do any more jokes, Tom. I've been taking a nightly poll on the state of the economy, as you know if you've been watching the show. Tell me tonight, just raise your hand, how many of you for the past few weeks have been living on stolen tuna fish? <laughs> hmm, all righty. What else is happening today? Uh, everybody is in trouble, you know, really. You, you mentioned you yeah. read the front page of the paper today and you can't find anything that's very happy. And I heard something tragic today. Elliot Janeway is down to five months' income. Oh. Yes, I don't know what happened to his six months, but he's going down. Anyway, I passed by the unemployment office today and uh, ran into an out-of-work magician. Now, he's having it real tough. He had to cut back on his act. He says, the big finish to his act now, he reaches in a top hat and pulls out a sweatband. That's all he can't afford to wrap it. Seriously, folks. Um, President uh, Ford. Pres Ford, thank you. That's right. He just bow quickly. How you doing? Uh, well, I didn't get to cast a vote. You know, it's not easy. Uh, he's been holding, he's invited leaders of Congress today to a White House breakfast. And things are getting tight there. It was a BYOB. Uh, bring your own bacon. Breakfast at the White House. But he is having a series of meetings uh, with congressional leaders about the economy. He's had breakfast meetings, luncheon meetings, and dinner meetings, all to discuss our starvation. Uh, you know, if he really wants to do something, why don't they invite us to breakfast, lunch, or dinner at the White House? And we'll go. He invited Alan Greenspan and William Simon to breakfast because he's running out of breakfast squares. <laughs> these, uh, these aren't good days for the president, and not too good for me. <laughs> no, during breakfast this morning, I understand President uh, Ford, Ford <laughs> lifted up the lid on the parquet margarine box, and a little voice inside said, Democrat. President uh, Ford said he was, uh... It wasn't that he was disappointed that the leaders didn't support his, uh... You know, his programs. But they never asked him for a second cup of coffee. And that, that hurt him. Wow. That's what they want. They want dancing. Speaking of trouble, the Los Angeles Lakers, what a blend. I went to a school for blends. Did you know that? To get from one joke to another, yes. It's the uh, Sonny Jackie School of Blends. And you learn to go from one joke to another. Los Angeles Lakers are our basketball team out here. Quotes. Uh, no, they've been having a bad... They've lost 12 out of the last 14 games. They've been in the cellar so long that their coach is a wine steward. Did you know that? <laughs> No, but the Lakers said their game plans are foolproof, except when the other team pulls a surprise move, like sending in a tall player. <laughs> One. No, no, not yet. Well, let's see. I, I probably should tell you in all fairness what you could be watching instead of this show right now. You think there's still time? <laughs> It, you mean it may be too late? They yeah, may have already right. been there. That's kind of cute. <laughs> Boy. Mm. Uh, Merv Griffin is having another one of his wonderful theme shows. He has the Jackson Five, the uh, the Brady Bunch, and the King family, all discussing sharing a bathroom. That is uh, the theme show that's on tonight, and that that's the last. I don't even have a finish to get out of this. You know, just absolutely no finish. <laughs> Oh, now, there's a visitor coming. There, we hope. Who's coming? <laughs> From the east. 
Tonight? Tonight, yes. Oh, oh, oh. Sure. What a night for him to be here. That's <laughs> certainly the right crowd for Karnak to show up. He'll, he'll be here anyway, though. I guess that's all I have. Uh, <laughs> oh, shut up. Uh, we have a grand show tonight. We have a most talented lady. Lily Tomlin is with us tonight. Yes, she is. A gentleman who uh, was with us some years ago on The Tonight Show and is uh, kind of retired now or semi-retired, but one of the fine actors, Mr. Walter Slazak, is going to join us. We have... <laughs> Crazy Jerry Van Dyke. Yeah. And a gentleman... <laughs> and a gentleman I invited to stay over from last night's show, Mr. Sam Blotner. I invited Sam back. Hey, hey Crazy Sam. To try to tell us what the hell Sam was talking about last night. <laughs> He's an interesting gentleman, and he'll be here to follow up on the saga of Costa Rica. So thanks for coming. We'll be right back. He's here, and the excitement it's caused with this audience is phenomenal. The famous sage, seer, soothsayer, all omniscient, all knowing, all seeing, and former diplomacy advisor to Earl Butts, <laughs> Karnak the Magnet! Here on the show. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. So good to see you again. You always say that, and I always forget exactly what it means. Sim Salabim. My three sons. <laughs> Sim Salabim. I hold in my hands the envelopes. These envelopes, a child of four can plainly see, are hermetically sealed. They've been kept in a mayonnaise jar in Funkin' Waggles Port since noon today. <laughs> no one knows the answer. To these questions. But you, in your incredible way, will ascertain the answers without ever before having heard the question. Is that about it, sir? <laughs> Won't you? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did you forget this I'm, bit? Yes, I'm See, when that. you wear the turban, that's what this is. <laughs> Envelope number one. Here we have silence, yes. please. Hermetically sealed. I know. And I will divine the answers yes. to the question. Mayonnaise jar, Funkin' Waggles porch, noon today. And I have not seen this. No one has seen it. No one knows the answer, but you will divine it. Let me get going here. The answer is two for the road. Two for the road. That's the answer. Question, how many Chryslers have been sold this year? <laughs> Wine and the Los Angeles Lakers. Wine... And the Los Angeles Lakers. <laughs> Name the two things that are in the cellar. <laughs> May the best meal you ever eat consist of kitty litter chips. <laughs> Dead end. Dead end. What does a dentist get if he backs into a Novocaine needle? <laughs> Peat moss. <laughs> Peat moss. What grows on the north side of a guy named Pete? What? Just <laughs> high wire. What do you call a Western Union marijuana gram? <laughs> May 
a vindictive camel leave a holy relic in your granolas. <laughs> Diamond head. <coughs> what does Liz Taylor have on her yacht? Diamond head. <laughs> True grit. True grit. What goes into an NBC commissary hamburger? Bridges. <laughs> what does an artist do when he sketches old people's teeth? <laughs> May a desert nomad do a desert no no to your sister. <laughs> what, what number is this? <laughs> Divining. I can I almost was, see you divining. I was divining. <laughs> T.S. Eliot. T.S. Eliot. <laughs> what do you say to Eliot Janeway when his savings account runs out? <laughs> I hold in my hand the last envelope. That crazed lizard unraveled your underwear. <laughs> it's a living. <laughs> Shake up. <laughs> What's a drink made with 7-Up and prune juice? Should, you know, I should mention I open a week from tonight. This is Thursday, isn't it? Yes. In uh, Las Vegas, you're coming up. I will be there. I'll be I, at, the uh, entire staff is going to be there. At Caesar's Palace, and I am not doing Karnak at, no. uh, at oh. Caesar's Palace. I know, but... You can do a whole series of those shake-up jokes. No, no. no, no I don't no. understand that at all. No. There's nothing there. <laughs> There's got to be a typo. <laughs> That had to be a typo. No, you read it nicely. It was good timing. I read it swell, yeah. but I realized when I said, this, it's a typo. typo. <laughs> Just anything. Well, sometimes you can't define the questions if they don't That's work right. on the typewriter. What am I, of course? Uh, Lily Tom is a most talented young lady. Uh, ever since she started on Laughing, she has developed tremendously, created a series of uh, wonderful characters that she does, ranging from Edith Ann, as you know, to Ernestine and many others. And this Friday, she's going to be a, doing a special called Lily. Is it on this network? It's not on this network, but nevertheless... It, we help everyone. It will be on. Would you welcome Lily Tomlin? <laughs> How are you? I'm just fine. It's so great to have you here, really. Why, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. I saw you on... <laughs> no, I saw you doing one night... A, I think, with Dick Cabot from one of the universities. Yes. Uh, uh, Maryland or something? Uh, was yes, it Maryland? Yes, University of Maryland. And you were sensational. Why, thanks. Aren't those great crowds? Do you uh -huh, like to work yeah, at college? Yeah, I love them, yes. They're they, the best. Yeah, the kids nowadays. Uh, kids, I shouldn't say that, but the young people in college are so hip as to what's going on. And they're just so enthusiastic, so they make a wonderful audience. Yeah. Do you like the uh, 
Do you like the question and answer thing you do with them? The ad lib type of stuff? Uh, yes, I, I don't uh, I don't normally do that. I usually when I when I do a college concert, I usually do Edith Ann with questions. Right. Um, I can talk much better as Edith Ann than as myself. Do you feel more secure? That's interesting. No, not, I mean I just I mean Edith Ann has a certain I can talk out of Edith Ann's life, you know. And if I could say more, more interestingly, I would say than my own. In other words, if I said what's the most embarrassing thing that happened to you as Edith Ann, something would come to you easier than... Yeah, something would come to me. <laughs> and it would be a horrible incident because it happened when my dog Buster, see, what happened was yeah. I was giving Buster a little bath uh-huh. and accidentally some Clorox fell in. Oh, in the bath? Yes, and all his hairs fell out. Oh. <laughs> and now whenever I go near him, he just goes... <laughs> It wasn't so embarrassing as it was horrible. <laughs> you have a great year. Before you did laugh in, where did you get your experience? Oh, uh, I started. Uh, I just. I was in New York, and I. Right. Uh, first, I was in co- in college in Detroit, and I. Um, I discovered that I uh, that I did vignettes and characters. You know, I hadn't realized that I did before I. Uh, I went. I got into a college show, and I saw that I saw what amounted to uh, material, and I realized that I had always invented stuff like that. You remember the first time you were in front of a group, and you got a genuine laugh from something you did, and all of a sudden you realized, hey, maybe I'm. No, kind of, I'll tell really? you when I when that happens to me is when I'm a child. See, I'm sure all this was tied up with uh, with my father, for instance, because uh, when, when I was a kid, and I lived in this old apartment house, and we lived in the basement apartment. And upstairs from us lived a woman named Mrs. Spear, who uh, worked day, you know, worked in the daytime, and her husband worked nights. So she'd come home from work about four or five o'clock, and we'd be fixing to have supper because my father worked in the factory, so we'd eat very early, like five o'clock right. or something. And my mother was, who was very always, you know, very nice and very pleasant and willing to please. And Mrs. Spear would ring our doorbell every night, and my mother would go to the. Uh, foot of the stairs of this basement apartment and she'd look up, you know, and she'd say, she'd ring Mrs. Spear in and then Mrs. Spear would say, oh, Mrs. Tomlin, I'm so sorry to have to ring your bell again tonight, but I forgot my key. And then she'd say, mmm, something smells good. (laughs) So my mother would say, well, come on down and have a bite to eat with us, see? So she'd always eat, Mrs. Spear would eat dinner with us two or three times a a week. And whenever she'd leave, my father wouldn't say a word. He'd sit over on the side like this, you know. He'd sit eating, and he wouldn't say a word to Mrs. Spear. So, and then every time she'd leave, he'd say, "If old lady Spear eats supper with us one more time, I'm going to give her a piece of my mind." So the next day, when Mrs. Spear rang the doorbell, I was about five or six years old, and I, my mother couldn't get to the door first, and I ran and answered it, and I told Mrs. Spear what my father, my father's <laughs> true feelings. As five-year-old children are wont to do. Yes, right. and it was, uh, and while my mother was horrified, you know, and it humiliated her. My father uh, rather applauded it in a covert way. And so I think that was uh, when I got on to, uh, since we got off on this subject, yeah. I can remember two other incidences, incidents where, uh, and it was in the third grade, and one was, uh, no, one was in kindergarten and one was in third grade. Do you, you remember clear these? back to kindergarten? Oh, sure. I don't. I have people who can say they can remember when they were a year old, and I, find, I never can understand that, or two years. Well, uh, one incident was I would go to the country. I was my mother and daddy were from Kentucky, and we would go to the farm in the summer. And when I would come back, whenever I would draw or paint animals, I would always draw body parts on them. Mil- I would draw milk bags on cows, and oh. I would draw uh, penises on horses and things. Pardon? Well, they, they do have them. Yes, and I would draw them. I would indicate that they had body parts, you know. And I remember uh, my teachers being highly amused. <laughs> And highly stimulated, I might have too. So uh, Disney's animals never have body parts. Did you know that? So I just uh, I can remember those things. Uh, those things must have been not only provocative to me, but to uh, those uh, adults around me as well. That's interesting. You would do that at that age. Do you ever want to notice in the Disney pictures that the animals never have uh, those parts of the bodies at all? No. It must confuse a lot of children. You know, when they when they first see a horse yeah. or a cow. Uh, chipmunk. <laughs> strange animal. Uh, we have to take a little break here to pick up something, but we're coming back. Sure we are. <laughs> we 
Yes, she just happened to join us. We're talking with Lily Tomlin. We have Jerry Van Dyke and Walter Slezak and Mr. Sam Blotner with us. Did you meet Sam, Mr. Blotner? In yes, Max I said hello to him. Yeah, he's an interesting man. Um, we're, we're talking about your family and family background. And this, this may seem like a naive question. I'm sure you get it a lot of times. The success you've had, uh, how, how does your family relate to that? Very often you get strange reactions. Uh, uh, when offspring becomes very successful, you go back home. Sometimes your friends change in relation to you. Well, that I think is true. I think because uh, for a lot of friends, I have, in fact, I have, I'm, I don't think I have any friends uh, basically left, I mean, that I really still relate to. Oh, I st you, you asked me something, and I can get off on such a tangent. I started to talk about uh, one, one person I really still deal, do still love and uh, communicate with is a woman that lived in our old apartment house. Mrs. Spear? No, no, this oh. is, uh, <laughs> no, this is someone else. I won't mention her name because she'll crack up anyway, but uh, she's about 15 years older than I am. So when she was 25, I was about 10. And uh, she was divorced, see. Mm -hmm. She was one of the few divorced women in our building. And uh, she was... Was that considered uh, Oh, very... not bad, you know, yeah. unless you were suffering quite a bit. Oh, that's right. <laughs> so you she, must got, pay she for didn't that. suffer too much. Her boyfriend slept over, you know. <laughs> and uh, and no she suffering. was quite attractive anyway. And, uh, and so she was the building hussy, really. And she never was Haven't invited heard that to the word for a long time. Right. She was literally the building hussy and was not invited to the Tupperware parties. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. What and rejection. So, um, and and I loved her so much and I still do and we had so I mean I just could relate to her so right. much, you know, and uh and enjoyed her so much and I and so I'm still friends with her. Now she's one person that truly I can still identify I don't know. She's still living back in the building? No, no, she's oh. uh, she's left there long, long ago. Yeah. And uh, lives in another part of the world and all, another part of Detroit. <laughs> 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 but uh, but my family, of course, loved the fact that I got famous. Yeah. And um, oh, I have so many things I could tell you. I don't even know where to start. Like for instance, uh, I, like just meant I just when I flashed on uh, when I was telling you that other story earlier about the animals and mention and mentioning uh, body parts. Yeah. Uh, I was down visiting my mother in Kentucky, and I was going to do a college concert nearby in Missouri. And it was very close to Paducah, where my mother lived, so all my relatives were going to come. I know they didn't want to come, basically, because first of all, it was like about an hour and a half drive, and the Mississippi and the Ohio's were swollen to right. flood uh, levels. And uh, they most of them have to get up and milk in the morning, so they have to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning, and to be out late is a v big hardship. But anyway, and, and I didn't want them to come because I was afraid I would have to censor my act. Well, so, you don't get really racy, do you? No, I don't. But I say body parts, just like saying, like I said the word breasts on my last special a year ago, you know, and I was sitting in my mother's living room in Kentucky, and she went, oh! <laughs> Did you have to say that? That's still no-no, right? <laughs> no, and that's yeah. supposed to say body parts. Oh. So I didn't, uh, I didn't, uh... I didn't uh, censor my act, you know. I mean, I just, I forgot, actually. I mean, I was in a torment backstage before it started, and 50 of my relatives were sitting in the front row. And after I got started and I was on such a roll with the audience, I forgot, you know. So you just went right I just there. went and did my, my, nothing in my act is gratuitous in that sense. Right. You know, it's really uh, elevated and tasteful. <laughs> body so, parts and all body parts can be tasteful. Well. And elevated. Uh, 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 hold it, hold it. You see, now that. That is your joke, and you're responsible for that. I certainly did. I mean, you can talk about part in a, in a tasteful manner. That's what you were saying. Or in a truthful manner. In a truthful manner. That was the word that, uh, that should have been in there. Uh, sorry about that. No, I'm not sorry. It's your, your fault. Right? They've only cheapened themselves. That's right. They've lured themselves. So, they'll be, and they'll feel smaller in the morning for it. That's wrong also, isn't it? You see? When, when you're wrong, everything starts to go wrong, no matter, no matter what you say. Uh, excuse me, I'm, I'm sorry I didn't make that So, your relatives, how did they react to all this? Well, they were very kindly to me and polite and sort of patted me and went on, you know. And I was suffering, feeling guilty because I knew they had to get up in the morning and all. And so the next morning, my Aunt Odie May, who's really wonderful. And she's Odie my, May? Yeah, yeah and she's my right. daddy's oldest sister. And she called me up and she said... Uh, well, I guess there was kitchen lights on all over Ballard County last night talking about you. But I told our why I'm very well acquainted with those words. <laughs> so. You were forgiven. 
Well, it's forgiven by her. You've got a good background to draw on. Oh, they're, uh, everybody yeah, they're does really when wonderful. They do, you draw on the relatives, friends. Wait, let me friends. tell you what my father says when, uh, when, my, when I first got on Laugh. I told this story on my first special a couple of years ago, but I never got any real true reaction to it. To me, it's uh, just a poem, you know? But I, I had just been on Laugh in five or six weeks, and, I was, and the phone operator had made me very well known. And uh, he was very tickled by it. And I went to visit him in Indiana. He and my mother had moved there. And uh, so he took us all out to dinner, but we went to like, you know, um, it's really like a tavern, but you know, a tavern that has a lot of wood in it, so it's kind of high class. Right, I know the difference. <laughs> Oh, something like ye old tavern. Ye old, right, a, but right. It, it has octagonal tiles on the floor yeah. and a very lot of dark wood, and you can get shrimp, chicken, uh, barbecued chicken. It takes uh, it out of the bar category, ribs. yeah. It takes it out of the bar category, right, because you can have dinner there in a right. sense, and, and, but it, everything comes in a plastic basket. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really quite wonderful. So my daddy, uh, so we're all sitting there, and he fixed up the lady upstairs with a fella he worked with uh, at the factory, and... Uh, we were all sitting there, and the waitress came over, and, and all the Tomlins see talking that kind of voice like that. That I told you know that's why Odie May talks just like my father. Yeah. <laughs> they just happen to talk that way. So my father calls the waitress over, and he says, "Who do you think that is?" Pointing to me, and I've been on laughing about six weeks, you know, and nobody knows that this is is this. <laughs> so she gets down and she looks in my face because me and my daddy look just alike, you know, and she said. Well, I guess that's your daughter. I says, yeah, you're damn right. Get up and sing a song, babe. Uh, you? And I said, oh, Papa, please, I don't want to. I can't. And he said, babe, get up and sing a song for the people. I said, please, Papa, I don't want to. I'm too embarrassed. And he said, babe, you got to learn how to be popular. Uh, hey, your dad's proud of you. That's all that's Oh, natural. yeah, sure. Get up and sing. So I told that on my first special because it was, uh, it seemed so classic, uh, you know, the idea of trying to embark on a network television career, and you must learn how to be popular. Yeah, it's kind of strange. We have to do this, and we're coming back. Just one moment. Stay with us. We're back. We're uh, spending a, a good time here with Lily Tomlin. Uh, of all the characters you've done, most of them, of course, come out of experience. I know, I think I've heard you tell the story before when you do the gal who's the, at the checkout counter. Dot. Yes. Name, that you actually went down to a market, observed... Uh... I, yeah, I worked as a checker for three or four days at, uh, at an Alpha Beta in Burbank. Really went down? Yes, it was... The one at uh, Witsit and... Uh, is it Witsit and uh, Burbank, I guess. I think that's my favorite one. <laughs> Isn't it? It's oh, really yes. great. I love it. It's extremely well stocked. Oh, cool. <laughs> I, was, I said, I said to Maurice, who is the manager there, I said, I wish this Alpha Beta were near me. It's so well stocked. Yeah. <laughs> so you went in and actually picked up. Yes, all the I little... did. I uh, because I wanted to become proficient on the uh, cash register, <laughs> and um, I did. Uh, it's it just that I couldn't really. Uh, it was a neighborhood where there quite, there's a lot of uh, older people. And so they're on fixed incomes, I'm sure. And it was really, uh, um, I well, mean, people... Kind of sad at times when people are really looking... Not really sad, they're... because the human beings are just too gutsy and uh, terrific, you know, to be that sad. It's just that the spirit is, ter is terrific, but, it's, but it is sort of delicate, you know, because people line up for day-old bread. And Although I think buying day-old bread is the only intelligent thing to do. Because you buy a... Of course, you buy a loaf of bread and pay 70 cents for it or something, and the next day you've got two-thirds of it left and it's still day old. <laughs> you might as well buy day old, you know. Yeah, but then the third day, it's three days old. <laughs> uh, well, well, who I is, but I see what you mean. Uh, no, I think you're right. I used to work in a supermarket one time, yeah. Stamping cans. Boy, is that boring. Oh, I would like that. I always wanted to do oh, that. Oh, yeah, but yeah. after about 14 cases, you don't care. Any of you stamping people and going by, crack your head, it's... <laughs> It's not the most creative work in the whole world, you know. If you can find the top or the bottom of the can, you're ahead of the game. <laughs> Are you working on anybody new? Any new characters? Uh, no, but I was going to, uh, I, after I mentioned that, darn it. Now I don't know what to do. What? I don't know which way to turn at this moment. Turn anyway? No, you, turn, uh, you turn to the right there. Well, I was going to yeah. do some, I was going to do a little bit of uh, supermarket, but it didn't. Oh, go ahead. Okay, sure. no, no, wait a second. Do whatever you like. 
this is uh, because I couldn't tell anything really humorous about working at the Alpha Beta, you know, other than the fact that I uh, stole a steak and a roll of adhesive tape. Uh, oh, no, I'm just kidding, no, you Maurice. Didn't do that, yes. And so um, I was going to do this. Did you ever shoplift anything? Oh, many kid? times. Yes. Mm-hmm. In fact, I faced great humiliation more than once. Sorry. <laughs> No, I... I don't like to talk uh, freely about having a shop lifted because uh, it gives people, uh, uh, sounds like I'm advocating it. Yes, and know? I heard once we talked about it on the air one night, excuse me for interrupting, and I got a, a letter from the president of Department Stores of America or something saying, please don't make that look like it's a lighted thing because it's billions of dollars a year. Yes, so. it is, right. But I, one thing did, oh, I'm getting off the track, but uh, when I was in Detroit, uh, I had a shop lifted at J.L. Hudson, which is the biggest department store in Detroit. <laughs> Why I'm revealing this, I don't know. Because <laughs> I'm your friendly doctor type. You tell me, tell me. Well, I'd only done it because it was. Qu- I wanted to see. I actually wanted to see what it was like. You know, I wanted to f- see what the experience was like. Because I didn't try to do a slick job. I did a very bungled uh, job so that I would get apprehended. Uh-huh. And, it, and as a matter of fact, I did. And the woman said, uh, the woman uh, who it was wintertime and she had on a light topper, so I knew that she was not a true shopper. You know, walking around the store in like a raincoat and it was 20 to be low outside. And she said, uh, walk this way, keep smiling, no one is going to embarrass you. Keep walking this way, keep smiling, no one is going to embarrass you. Keep smiling, keep walking this way, keep, no one is going to embarrass you. Anyway, they did embarrass me and, uh, and I gave up the item that I had shoplifted uh, and I told, and then I smiled and laughed and, and horsed around and said, well, I'm and they knew me, and then they realized that I was an actress, a local actress, and I said I was wanted to see what it felt like to be apprehended. And then, so years, but they still put my name down on the card and put it in a file, you know, and I was just mortified. But I then years later, after I got on laughing, I did a record signing uh, party at, on the record in the record department. And in my mind was always the fact that downstairs in the security department was my name on file. Shoplifter, Tom yeah. Lily. But anyway, all right, do I have time or not? Do you have to break? Yes, go ahead. Okay, I'll just do this one real fast. This is like Dot, uh, this is Dot the supermarket checker, and uh, Edith Ann is coming through the line. Edith Ann is the little child. This little piggy went to market. This little piggy stayed home. This little piggy had roast beef. And this little piggy was the one back there on aisle six making a sour cream dip for her Fritos, wasn't you, Edith Ann? <laughs> no. Then you was the one back there making a peanut butter sandwich. No, I was the one back there reading this comic book and eating cookies. <laughs> well, let's see now. What you got in this cart? Popcorn, peanuts, cupcakes. Who told you to get all this stuff? The bad on TV. Uh, well, now, Edith Ann, I can take all this other stuff back, but you have eaten the entire contents of this box of animal crackers. Don't you think you ought to pay for it? No, Dot. I didn't do nothing honest. You looked me straight in the eye. Did you or did you not open up this box of animal crackers? Yes. But when I looked inside, there wasn't nothing there. (laughs) They had eaten up each other. (laughs) My heart's pounding slightly. Perfect line for child. I told about shoplifting. Yes, well, don't worry about it. We should do a disclaimer. That d- d- don't go around shoplifting, because you'll be embarrassed, but keep smiling. <laughs> you see a lady in a raincoat in Hudson's and it's winter, don't take nothing. <laughs> we'll take a break and we'll be right back. <laughs> it's a pleasure to have Walter Slasak back with us tonight. He was with us some years ago, but he is... Uh, uh, kind of retired now, whatever kind of retired means. But he won a Tony in 1955 for his role in Fanny. He's had a most illustrious career. Would you welcome, please, Mr. Walter Slasak. Hey, it's so good to see you. Wonderful to be here and not want anything. Not wanting nothing to plug. I have no show to sell. I have no opening. No have movies, no, book, no books, nothing. no plugs, no records. I'm just here to talk. Well, I'm glad. And it's great to see you again. How many years ago was it that you were with us? Um, well, I remember the day I met you. It was October the 1st, 1962. That was a day? Vincent Sardi was opening a restaurant in Greenwich called The Showboat. And I met you there. Um, and you were a very nervous and shaky young man. 
because then you were going to town to do your first taped show You're absolute, after you took over from Jack Park. You're absolutely right. Yes, I know. October. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know why I'm arguing, but you're absolutely <laughs> right. But you were with us on the show once because I remember you telling a story. Was it dirty? No. It was a funny story that had to do with an autobiography about swans. Right? Oh, yes. That no. old thing. No, Is I don't... Is it like that? There was a very strange yeah. thing about Long Grin or something? Uh... No, my father was a famous opera singer. Oh, right. And you want to lead me into it? No, you don't have to do that now. We can talk about that no. later, but I remember that from the show. Yes. And my father was a famous, famous opera singer, and he sang Long Green. And for those who do not know the opera, Long Green is a knight of the Holy Grail. The Holy Grail is in Spain, but the opera takes place in the Netherlands. And he arrives, evidently from Spain, in a boat standing up, and the boat is drawn by a swan, which is an unlikely form of locomotion. <laughs> and my father was backstage, ready to step into that boat with the swan, when the stagehand on the other side got his signals crossed and started pulling. And the swan left, the boat left without him, and he turned around and said, what time's the next swan? <laughs> I couldn't remember the punchline, but that's one of the great stories of all the time. Well, a couple of months ago, there's something very funny that happened. A Russian pr uh, prima donna sang... La Tosca. And she, in uh, Russia, they were not used to use real candles next to the body of Scarpia. Huh? And she planted the candles, and her wig got fire. Huh? And it was flame, and suddenly Scarpia, from his deathbed, he was already dead, jumped up, took her wig <laughs> off, planted on it, and lay down again. <laughs> oh, that's true. I think she was the wife of this famous cellist. Uh, I don't know. No, not Piotr Gleski. No. I only am interested in, in, in Russian dances that escape. That would put a kind of a damper on the rest of the opera, wouldn't it? Did the well, audience ever the recover? the first time in the history of Tosca that the first, second that curtain went down with a laugh. Yeah, that's, just, that's hysterical. That's hysterical. Are you really fully retired now from, from acting? Well, yes, I'm more or less retired. I've lost some weight up here. <laughs> the body part is still here. <laughs> and uh, it all sank down, you see. Behind, behind, the, behind, behind the counter, I look wonderful. You just all kind of lowered center of gravity. I'm sorry, you don't have to cover this up. Yeah. Are you living in Switzerland now? We live in Switzerland. We live <coughs> in Lugano. And it's I've a never wonderful, been there, but I understand oh, it's a beautiful, beautiful place. It has mountains and a lake and lots of old people. Actually, it's a, well, I would say it's a open air cemetery, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit like, Flo air. like Florida, you know, and a lot of senior citizens like myself, in 27 years I'll be 100. <laughs> <laughs> they are living there, and uh, I instigated amongst our circle of friends a rule that there's a penalty to be paid every time you mention <coughs> either doctor, doctor's bills, lawyer's bills, Prostata, that costs 35 francs. Hysterectomy is only 10 francs because they're all old people, they've had it, you know? <laughs> and so forth. Now, you have to kind of narrow your circle of conversation, your sphere, your sphere of conversations, because otherwise you talk of nothing but disease and death and how to cheat on the income tax and how to cheat on the death taxes and how to avoid death taxes completely. It's, it's, it's the general... Tone there. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like quite a place. You, uh, how, how do you spend most of your time? You just with, with your friends? Well, or? I tell you, I'm very lazy. Uh, I have a writer's block for, for the last seven years. <laughs> and uh, I'm working on a book. It started out with a short story about <coughs> a dog. Our dog is called Amos, and the book is called, was called, uh, My Name is Amos, I'm an Only Dog. And this has become just a chapter. But I had a dog once in New York. It was called Angel Face. It was an English bulldog, 80 pounds of ugliness. And I walked with him in Central Park, and uh, suddenly he was gone. He was off the leash, and I saw that something was moving in a bush. And when I came closer, he was raping a thoroughbred white fox terrier dog. <laughs> At least he's selective. Oh, God, what do you do now? And just then, a man came, <laughs> Daisy, Daisy, <laughs> and he saw what happened and froze. And he turned to me and said, Why isn't your dog muzzled? <laughs> oh. 
we are on the air, so I can't tell you my answer. Uh, well, I... Could you, could you tell me later? Because there's got to be a dandy. Yeah. I didn't know there's such a thing as uh, rape or even statutory rape among dogs. Well, uh, I don't know it was rape, but anyway, the, the end effect was the same. Yeah, right. Interesting. <laughs> interesting. <laughs> you, you lived out... Uh, you lived out here in Hollywood when they, what they call, refer to, and people get a tie, almost the good old days or the glamour yes. days, and the people say that. The good old days, and I you earned, worked with earned all a lot of money, and I saved it. That's sure. why I can retire. Actually, I'm here in America to eat up my pensions. <laughs> you see, I'm getting a pension from Screen Actors Guild, from AFTRA, from, from Equity, and from Social Security. That's nice. And I do not have the heart put one dollar down and get two francs and 39 centimes for a dollar. About two and a half years ago, it used to be four francs and 33 centimes. Mm -hmm. So I had it accumulate here for a couple of years, and now I'm eating it up. And you come over and visit, visit your money. That makes it possible for me to be on your show. That's great. What would, what would it be in francs now? What's our, uh, our scale now for the show? The, what do we pay? I, that, what do you mean, 420? 420 to the dollar? No, it's two forty. Two forty. Swiss French. Swiss French. Oh, yes. French. oh no, not French French. Oh. Big currency. Do no, we have to? Do we have to pay Walter in Swiss francs tonight? So I... No, no, no. I'm getting paid in dollars, and I'm going to eat them up right on the way on train back. Yeah. <laughs> when when people lived in those days, you said you saved your money. There were a lot of people who who didn't. Because oh, in those yes, days, you many, many made uh, thousands and yeah. thousands of dollars and I, spent it. I did a picture once in, in Lebanon, and there's a casino, and one of my co-stars was a very, very talented actor, and we had to bail him out. He got $35,000 for the picture, and he lost it one night. Mm. At the casino? Huh? At the That's... casino, yes. Yeah, so. oh, Thank God I never did this. Yeah. And we live a very good life out there. My wife is a ceramist. She has her own kiln and her own wheel as she even sells and I, I i get up at three o'clock in the morning to watch if the corn is falling <laughs> and it's a, it's a good life it seems like you're enjoying it yeah and you deserve it yeah let me take a small break and we'll be right back here schlitz brews their oh. schlitz brews you can do this schlitz yeah. brews their beer to taste the best and why not Gary Van Dyke is here tonight. He is a silly person. He's a silly person. And he'll be opening at the Safari Hotel in Phoenix, Arizona on Monday for a week. Then he'll be up at Harrah's in Lake Tahoe beginning uh, the 18th of March. Would you welcome Jerry Van Dyke? Thank you. Just for once, I'd like to be able to follow the Bring On music. We got a guy back home does a local kiddie show, and he really ought to be doing it. Uh, he, uh, he likes to dip in the, the sauce a little too much. Uh, and I'd like to give you a sample of one of his shows. Uh, his name's Buckaroo Barney. Now, when he comes out, he usually works with a studio full of kids. So if you folks will help me out when Barney says hello, y'all back hi, Barney. Make him feel better. Well, boys and girls, it's four o'clock in time once again for your friend and mine, Buckaroo Barney. Hey, kids! Hey, kids! How are you today, boys? You boy, buddy, Buck Barney. <laughs> you boys and girls have to excuse Barney a little bit afternoon, but. Buckaroo Barney is a little tired. <laughs> I, I went across the street for lunch and got a little tired. <laughs> you think I'm tired? You want to see Betty Wilson, the weather girl. <laughs> She's really tired. She's still over there getting more tired. Don't miss that six o'clock weather. <laughs> Well, kids, it looks like we got a great show for you today. There we go. We got a Hop Along Cast movie. <laughs> but before the movie, what do you say? Let's all say hello to our little old buddy, Popo the Frog. Ha! <laughs> 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 Where's Popo today, kids? 
Where's Popo? Hi. Popo. Where's Popo? Where's the ham puppet? Oh, I got it. There you go. There he is. There he is. Oh, jeez. <laughs> How are you today, Popo? Fine. <laughs> You want to say hello to all boys and girls out there? Read it. Well, what do you say? What do you say? Let's read some of the letters the kids send us in today. Okay, Popo? Popo, bye bye. Here's a letter here. Ah! Here's a letter here that we got from, uh, looks like, uh, it's a, it's a picture today. It's a picture of little uh, Sally Thompson and her mommy down at the beach. And there they are. Yeah. <laughs> you know, your other kids have pictures of your mommies down at the beach. Why don't you send them in, old Barney? <laughs> Put that up in the locker. <laughs> Well, it's birthday time once again, right, Paul Paul? That's right, Barney. And we want to... <laughs> we want to say happy birthday today to little Freddie, little Jimmy, little Katie Sue, little Kelly Jean, little Betty, little Jerry, little Ronnie, little Peter, Peter. Little Peter. Peter. Oh, it's two Peters. <laughs> I want to send out a special greeting today to my little boy, Dave. He's, uh, Dave's having his 11th birthday to, to, today, and I say happy birthday, Davey. Davey lives over there in Clinton with his mommy and, and his new dad. <laughs> <laughs> well, sorry I didn't get out to see you last weekend, buddy, but used to be daddy was the terrible tired last weekend. <laughs> well, I'll be out there this weekend and I'll bring you your present. Okay, buddy? Okay. Don't worry, Martha, I won't stay. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to embarrass New Daddy. <laughs> new Daddy never gets tired. <laughs> <laughs> but old mommy gets tired every now and then, right, Martha? <laughs> <laughs> But I just want you to know everything's fine with me, buddy. I got a, I got a new room down to Y. And... gets tired. Oh, Daddy never gets tired. I was uh, talking to Sam backstage. Sam Blotner? Have you met oh, Sam? Oh, Sam's something else. I understand. Yeah. 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 I'm the only one in the world. Sam was with us last night. I invited him to come back because oh, uh, he lives in Costa Rica now. And uh, Yes, I heard all about Did Costa you really? Rica. Yes, I'm thinking of moving there, as a matter of fact. I think he has the right attitude. Yeah. How are things going? What do you want? Oh, I got big news. Yeah. I don't even know where to start. Everything's been happening. Yeah. Harlan Hosh is running for mayor of Danville. Danville, Ohio. Harlan no, no, no. Hush. I bet I bet you uh, never thought that happened. Harlan Hush. Harlan Hush is running for mayor against David Palmer. They're both good friends of mine, and uh, and I wanted to met because Harlan. I've been back here helping him out. Did both, you grow up with him? yeah, Harlan was my uh, uh, an officer in high school, and uh, I owe him a few favors. Right. I promised him if I ever got a shot, I'd give him a give him pay him back. I got you know wasn't anything serious. I no. skipping school and I. Some about hubcaps. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Who's the other fellow? Then I'm setting Mrs. Busby on fire. Didn't help. Thomas. Harlan's having a little problem proving that he's not crazy. There's a guy that was in a prime. Are these real names now? Oh, yeah. Because you see what can happen under the federal communication. We'll hear from Harlan's opponent demanding oh, equal David time. Oh, David Palmer is Harlan's opponent. Oh, uh, say some nice things about David. Oh, too. well, I was going to say something oh, good. nice about Good, good. Because they're both good friends of mine. Oh. I've been helping them both. Oh, good. I've been going back there. As a matter of fact, they sent for me because there's a lot of snow. And I've been trying to be even with helping them both out in the in the race because uh, they get me because I have a, 
a, a talent uh, when they they give me some beer, and then I write both their names in, in the this night. I'm afraid you were all over Daniel. Afraid that's where you were headed. Yes. I, uh, well, I, I I hold the record. Yes, uh, I hold the I, record. I don't think I want to hear about it. Well, <laughs> it's something that uh, you know. The, I don't have a lot of records. You know, in high school, I wrote the whole senior class. Did you really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I wouldn't have that big a class, but you know, we couldn't get our hands on that much beer either. <laughs> I was I was a classic at it, you know, and uh, I, I I remember I wrote the, my name in the, my girlfriend's front yard. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't, I don't, 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 no, don't tell was... me the end of that. Uh, don't tell don't tell me the end of that joke. Uh, but I've been helping both of them out. There's would no you doubt live in Danville? Get, yeah, I, I can't in figure Danville. out where you live. I live in well, I lived in Danville, Illinois, but yeah. I worked. I I've been there for I was there for about a year, and then I went on the road and worked. I was in Michigan, and I come back, and my family. Uh, they moved. Oh. And now we're trying to find out where they live. Which is, uh, you know, something that happened in high school. I went to school one day and my family... And when you came home and they it's were gone. It's a nice a little game that they, they have. Yeah. But uh, Gaylord Hall, who was... Uh, in Gaylord the, Hall. Gaylord Hall was in the primary, and he's also a friend of mine, but Gaylord... Harlan... Harlan can't prove, like, and neither can... David that are running that they're not crazy. Gaylord almost made because Gaylord was crazy. Gaylord, they put Gaylord away, and what happens? They put him away, and then he, when when they release you, you get this card to mm-hmm. say you're all right. Right now, he's out and saying that both Gaylord and David are crazy, and they're saying, well, Gaylord's the one that's crazy, and he pulls out the card and says, I can prove I'm not crazy, and they don't have a card. <laughs> As I understand it, you're helping these two fellows. <laughs> well, it's not easy. I'm glad you're not against them because that could be trouble. Well, no, they're not. They're all, they're okay. So's Gaylord now. Yeah, okay. But I liked him a little better when he's crazy. <laughs> but they're both all right. Oh yeah, David, <laughs> David, and and, uh, and Harlan, and I'll let you know how it comes up. Would you? Because Danville needs some. We need some help. Back yeah, here. well, send the results immediately. Yeah, I'll have a home for sale. Would you? Okay. <laughs> well, is that still up for sale? Yes. All right. We'll take a short break, and we're coming right back. You haven't moved that yet. Huh? No. <laughs> for those of you who might not have seen last night's show, we had a gentleman by the name of Sam Blockner. Uh, Sam Blockner is not not a professional entertainer, a gentleman who used to live in Maine and moved to Costa Rica, and he keeps in touch with us. And the reason I have the chair here is because Sam brought this on last night as a gift, and there was rather a convoluted story about uh, the former president of Costa Rica who had something to do with it. We never did find out exactly what was going on. So I invited Sam to stay over because he said, after all, it was 6,000 miles back to Costa Rica, so he's staying for an extra day. Would you welcome Sam Blockner? <laughs> Hi, Sam. How are you? Hey, you met all the people back. Nice to see you, Sam. Nice to Good to see you again, Sam. So nice to see you. I see you in the costume. You speak Spanish. Right. Thank you. Sam, welcome back. We've got to make it fast tonight. Yeah. Much time. What'd you do last night? Huh? What'd you do I when you were here in Los Angeles? Fred Goodnight. But he oh, yeah, Fred Goodnight. Costa Rica. Was your friend we talked about last yeah. night? He, he has a bar now, the El Toro Bar. Has a bar? He went back before they drank all his booze up, I think. Uh huh. Now, you started to tell me a story about this chair last night, about Dom Pepe, who was yeah. the, uh, three times the president, president of Costa Rica. Costa Rica. Did he have anything to do with this chair? Yes. <laughs> I took the chair over to his office to sit in. Ah, that's it. That was it. We never got to that, you see. We, we practically did. Did I show you his picture yet? No. Not yet. Do you have it? Yeah, you've got it right here. You're holding it, Paul. This, this, oh, this, this is Don Pepe. Oh, this is Don Pepe. This is Don Pepe. Everybody should look at Don Pepe. Yeah. We should all stand up when we look at it. Well, I don't know it's necessary here, but that's that's the former president of Costa Rica. Yeah. And he's and he sat in the chair. Yes. Oh well that's I see, that's the way. I told him he looked like Ricardo Montalban, is it? Ricardo Montalban. I felt very happy when they said that. Uh huh. Because you know, it's Spanish too, like Ricardo Montalban. Yes, that's right. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, what did you do in Los Angeles now? Did you go out on the town or something? I usually go to bed about 8, 9 o'clock, <laughs> but I had to watch the show, you know. Did you stay up and watch yourself last yeah, night? I kind of got fatigued watching it. Uh-huh. It's quite late, you know. Yes, it is. I had I had a telephone call at quarter past one in the morning. Some guy called me from Mobile, Alabama. He says he's a radiologist. 
the doctor, an x-ray doctor? Mm-hmm. He said, any time you're going through a mobile, give me a free x-ray. <laughs> you're popular, Johnny. That's, that's worth the drive alone. You ought, to, guy, ought not, to pick that up. That I would, uh... True. I'm not kidding you. Dr. Lata. L-L-U-T-R. You get some strange calls. And his wife, they both talk to me on the telephone. Yeah. And he wanted to give you a free... Free extra anytime I'm going through. Well, that's nice. Two, two people called me today. One from Oklahoma City. Uh-huh. There's oil wells. Another guy called me from New Albany, Indiana, inquired about gold mines. I said, I have no gold mines, you know. Right. Well, I suppose they hear Costa Rica, and yeah. they, they do have gold in Costa Rica, don't they? Well, very little. 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 In the teeth, mostly. <laughs> what, what do you have here, Sam? Uh, this is more or less a diploma. <laughs> Would you care to see it? But I can't show it to the audience, because this what? Print is, the print is very small. I can't... This is, this is a pretty good diploma, right? I see. See, see, senor. Oh, I see. Yeah, I didn't well, see. No, yeah. But let's get back to the chair now. Well, there's more uh, about the chair? Well, no, I, I went to... I'll tell you the primary person. See? Hi, Fred. I mean, I... I can Fred good night mixed up. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, well, what is there more to say about the chair? Well, there's a secret that goes with that chair. That's a secret well, about I the chair. I Pepe. I said, uh, well, I didn't try to get my foot in the door, but I... I well, Senior Vesco, Robert Vesco, came to Costa Rica a couple of years back. Right. He's the one who he, well, they said he left was a from fugitive here because... And stuff yeah. like that. Well, he still he, is a fugitive in this country, well, I understand. more or less, but I was a fugitive, too, more or less. We're all running away from... No, I mean, if he comes there. back here, I think he's subject to arrest. He, I don't believe he'll come back. But the no, I don't think... No, that's a good move right there. He has no good reason to come back. No, he has no good reason no, to come no. back, yeah. You it, see, with $225 million, you go a long ways to... <coughs> You know. What's the cost of living in Costa Rica? Oh, oh, quite reasonable. Bananas are still a penny apiece. Really? But Alka-Seltzers are quite high, though. I mean, you know, <laughs> lay off the bananas, you won't need them. That's right. <laughs> but getting back to uh, the premier... Uh, no. The change is okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, no, but uh, Don Pepe, I said, uh, I asked him about uh, Robert Vesco. I said, uh, has he been an asset of liability to, to, to this country? Mm-hmm. He said, he didn't say he is an asset, but he said he will be an asset. Because he invested twenty million or more dollars in government bonds in that country, mm-hmm. uh, he's bought lands and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And I said, "What are my chances of talking with him?" I said, "I figured where well, he knew him, where well, he had business connections." He, uh, Don Pepe made a two million dollar. He borrowed two million dollars his business from him. Oh. He didn't get it as a gift. He just borrowed it plus interest. See? Mm-hmm. It wasn't the Watergate business. Oh, just, sure. He has to pay it back in time. Yes, oh, he borrowed it. Yeah. But everybody knew it when he borrowed it. I mean, it wasn't nothing. Oh, I didn't. So he borrowed the money, and uh, it's business, business. So finally, I said, well, I would like very much to have a conversation with Senior Vesco, but I-, I can't seem to get a hold of him. I've been trying for two and a half weeks to call him on the phone. I've been calling his secretary. She di- isn't actually giving me the brush off, but uh, she said that Mr. Vesco is not available and stuff like that. See, but well, That's a brush off. More or less, but he has he has farms. He has farms all over the country. See, and mm-hmm. uh, he could be out on his farm doing something. Could be. Yeah. Uh, did you ever get in touch with him? Well, uh, I'll tell you what happened. Uh, okay. A week ago tonight, which is Thursday, this is Thursday tonight. This is one week anniversary. I was have my usual siesta. I usually take a little nap after noon, about an hour or two. Mm-hmm. The telephone rang. Somebody answered it in the house, and we they didn't know who it was, and they finally they said. They'd like to speak with me. And I ran over to the phone, and the girl said, uh, uh, Mr. Vesco would like to talk with me. And I figured I was quite strange he would want to talk to me because for three weeks he's been kind of, he didn't, uh, he wasn't around, basically. He might have just came back from someplace. Yeah. So he said, so I said, he said, he's talking to me in English. He speaks good English, you know. He's from, well, he's from here, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, he went, he went right from there, from here, I understand. <laughs> So I don't, I don't know where he came from. He's quickly. quite a mysterious, quite a mysterious person. Yes, basically. So it was Mr. Vesco was on the phone. Yeah, he started to talk with me. He called me by my first name. He evidently knew my first name, and he said, "I would like you to talk with me, and you know where I live." I said, "I know the neighborhood you live in, but I've never been to your house because when I." used to go out there, it was all fields. I could buy for practically nothing. But since you lived there, the land has gone up quite high because wherever he buys stuff, mm-hmm. they start inflating the price of this poor guy, a figure of speech, you know. They, they have the prices, see. Uh-huh. But he built a house that cost a half a million dollars, so he made the land more valuable mm-hmm. around that area, see. What did he want? Well, he said, will you come over to my house? I said, well, I, I don't know where you live. He said, I live near the Russian embassy. And I said, gee, it's strange for a capitalist to live next 
to a communist is anybody. I mean, that's, that's what a kind of a democracy that country is, see? It's very democratic. <laughs> so I started the... He said, I will send my chauffeur to your house. Where do you live? And I explained to him so many yards, so, so, so. It's a long story, so I'll cut it short. So I said... It's too late for that. <laughs> you can say that. Oh, okay. Anyway, he, he went over to his house. No, I didn't go to his house. Oh, went to I his farm. I had to go and meet his chauffeur at a specific place. I drove over there. I was supposed to be there at 4 o'clock sharp. And I was there five minutes before. I usually get there. So pronto. Muy pronto. I was waiting. A Mercedes Benz was supposed to meet me there. I told him my number of my vehicle. I had placa numerous pension out of sixty. Pen sixty is my number. A Vesco incidentally is a pension out of two, like I am, see. Mm -hmm. We are pension we're on the same boat basically, only his boat is a little better. Mm -hmm. So finally, I was waiting, waiting, and finally I said to myself, Well, this is goof this guy is not gonna come by to meet me mm -hmm. to take me to his house. I waited from Four o'clock to four forty-five. I got rather impatient sitting there. See, so I said to myself, "I'm going to try to find this man's house." So I drove to Curiadabat, which is on the road to Cartago. That would out. Remember the volcano or so I Turn left at Allentown, right? Here. <laughs> no, no. They're building the New Jersey Turnpike right by his house now. Oh. Yes, sir. Okay, Sam. Time is limited now. Yes, sir. You finally found Vesco. No, I didn't find him yet. I'm driving. I'm driving. I asked people, where is the Russian embassy located in okay. Spanish? They, right. I didn't want to ask where Vesco House was because I figured they would probably give me the brush off. Okay. See? So I finally went towards the Russian embassy and I drove by a very elegant.